Today I'd like to talk about the mean and standard deviation of a probability distribution. But first I'd like to introduce that by reminding you some information about just a frequency distribution. So let's start with that. So our headings are X and the frequency. And let's, let's keep this really simple. Let's say we have just the number 3 and the number 8 are the only two numbers that are occurring. And let's say that the number 3 occurs two times and the number 8 occurs three times. Okay? Well, if I want to find out the average of these two numbers, it's not just going to be 8 plus 3 divided by 2 because we know how that, that we know how the 8 occurs more often than the 3. We have to take that into account. We have to take into account their frequency. This is often called a weighted average. This way, way all these types of averages are done. So we know that the, the mean, the average, is going to be equal to, well, I've got two threes, so that's three times two, and I've got to add to that all the eights, so that's eight times three, and I'm going to divide all that by five, because there are five numbers all together. And when I divide this, add these up and divide, well, that's six plus 20, 24 divided by five, that's 30 divided by five, which is six. So the mean isn't five and a half, it's actually six, because there was one more eight than there was a three. Okay? Now, as I said, this today is going to be about a probability distribution. So let's look at these same numbers in a probability distribution. Hopefully you understand that we have a table again with x, but my second column isn't the frequency, it is the probability. Let me abbreviate that, probability. Once again, we'll just use the numbers 3 and 8. Well, the probability, what do I mean by that? Well, if I had five numbers all together and a 3 occurred two of those times, isn't the prob that probability of getting a 3? Think of it this way. Taking uh, three eights and two threes and, and putting them in a sack and stirring them up, reaching in and pulling out, what's the probability that I would get a 3? Well, two of the five numbers, so that's the fraction two fifths. Okay, what's the probability of getting an 8? Well, of course, that must be the complement, which is three fifths. And just like up here in this frequency table, we had all the information we need to calculate the mean. When we have a probability distribution table, we still have all the information we need to calculate the mean. Now, let me show you how. Let's do a little bit of algebra. Let's, let's start with this right here. Remember this? I'm going to rewrite that. Let me get my eraser. And erase this answer here. What I want to do is... Hopefully you remember with some little basic math and algebra that if I have this number plus this number divided by 5, I can separate those into two different fractions. I can write this as 3 times 2 divided by 5 plus 8 times 3 divided by 5. Hopefully that doesn't bother too many of you. Let's go one step further. I can take either one of these numbers of the numerator and take it outside of the fraction and make it a whole number. And let's, so let's take this first number. So I can rewrite this as being the whole number 3 times 2 fifths plus the whole number 8 times 3 fifths. Okay, well I see the number 3, that's the number here and the number 8 here, but what does this 2 fifths and 3 fifths mean? Well, those are just the probabilities of the 8 occurring. So this tells me I can find, by just taking these same numbers, I can find the mean of a probability distribution by just taking each value of x, multiplying it times its probability, okay, and then just adding those together. Pretty nifty, huh? Let's do a more complicated one. Let me erase this. Now, 
let's say my, my probability distribution is the following. We're going to make this much more complicated. We're not going to have two numbers. We're going to have, that's probability, repeat that. We're going to go from 0 to 5. So it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's get some real probabilities here. Uh, three decimal places. Let's say the first one is point, uh, I've got some numbers here, point zero four two. The probability of one, let's say, is point one zero nine. I've got these worked out to make sure that these do all add up to exactly 100% or one. So I've got to make sure I get these exact. This is point two six three. Remember, it's not a true probability distribution unless all these probabilities do add up to exactly one. We ought to have the entire sample space, and therefore the probabilities have to add up to one. This last one is 0.342. The next one is 0.179. And the last one is uh, 0.065. Now, let's just do a quick check to make sure this adds up. That's 11, 14, 16. 16 plus 14 is 30 carried to 3. That's a 7. Uh, 13, 17, 24, it's another 30 carried to 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That adds up to exactly 1. So I do have a true probability distribution. Now, I want to find the mean. And let's, let's present the formula. Remember what we did. We simply take each x value and multiply it times its probability. So let's write that in a general formula form. So we're going to take each value of x and multiply it times its probability. And we're going to take each of these products and then add them all together. You should be familiar with the summation sigma. Okay. This is the formula that tells me how to find the mean, in this case of a probability distribution. So let's do it. Uh, in my calculator, I'm going to do this on a calculator, of course. I'm going to do it by hand. But what I'm going to enter is 0 times this plus 1 times this plus 2 times this plus 3 times this plus 4 times this plus 5 times that. And when I do all that, just using my calculator, I'm going to get a total of... Do I have that written down someplace? Yeah. I get exactly that the mean is equal to... 